Yeah, we're here at uh, the Cold War Memorial, uh, Charleston. And here's where we have the uh, Lewis and Clark sail, no replica of the boat. We have the benches for the various submarines that are put out in the field. We have this uh, from the Brits for their Cold War time and our help for them. Today we're going to do the Sandlands bench that we put in last year so everybody can see what, what it is other than what you saw on the, on the internet. But like you see we have benches all down this side, the port side, the starboard side the same way. It seems every year we get uh, a bench will be added from one boat or another. It's getting in a little disrepair. They're trying to keep it up, but it's not real easy. So these are benches. Here's the Haddo. Right, and they just—they're just arbitrary when you. When you come in and, and you tell uh, the curator that you want to put a bench in, you pick a spot and he'll put it. Obviously, we're moving more to the, the, the stern. Casimir a lot of these were put in basically in the beginning. Ray? And then as we get uh, more people get interested in the Cold War Memorial and you come up with your money, you get your... Uh, Will Rogers. You get your bench put in. Sure, so the both SSNs and SSPs. They're intermingled. There's no on Steuben? No rhyme or reason. Uh, very few were one of the one of the two or Flash three it. where we were able to put the uh, the WW2 patch on the bench along with the with the 660. They want to make sure that everything stays simple and plain. <coughs> and I believe we have a group uh, from another boat here dedicating their bench at the same time. Very good. We're a sandwich. Every state in the union has got one boat. That's uh, the state boat. Okay. Ours, ours here is the Amberjack. And our WW2 vets uh, put up this memorial, I guess it's three years ago now. Okay. And it, uh, every year that we uh, celebrate the loss of the Amberjack and the uh, submarine birthday, and uh, we started off by reading all the names of the guys that were lost on the boat, and we followed that up with an, uh, by calling two bell ceremony for the ships that were lost. Very good. And on the back side, we have the uh, where the boats were lost in the Pacific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Positions of the submarines lost in the in the listing of the of the boats, the 52 boats that were lost. Very nice. It says this plaque is dedicated to the wives and mothers for the hardships they endured as they served with us in World War II. Swamp Fox chapter, so that was a Swamp Fox. Mm -hmm. okay. WW2. That's what our is. And uh, this one here is pretty obvious, the threshing and sport okay. lost during our time frame. Can get you to walk up to it? This is for the uh, USS Thresher SSN 593 it was lost. And then the USS Scorpion was lost four years later. That's us in 589. Thankfully, it's the only two new ones that we've lost today. Yeah. Very solid. Very good. <coughs> Not easily. This is the uh, Sandlands bench, and what we wanted to do was to bring the World War II sand lance, the 381, with the sand lance that we were on, 660. 
So we had both uh, of the patches engraved on the granite. And then also we wanted to add uh, Lieutenant Commander uh, Patrick Murphy, who was a uh, casualty at the Pentagon on 9-11. 2001. So we put in memory of Lieutenant Commander Patrick Jude Murphy, USNR, June 25, 1963 to September 11, 2001, Pentagon casualty. And then on all the benches they put the uh, sponsored by the former shipmates of USS Sandlance 660, using the name of the submarine, not the Sandlance on all the benches, but just to show that the benches to folks that have no idea where the benches come from. And they're added throughout the, the years, they've been adding benches on both sides of the boat of the Lewis and Clark. All right, very good, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Michael Paulette. I was on the uh, Sandlance from uh, November 77 to November of 81, uh, auxiliary machinist mate. And uh, one of the most memorable moments was uh, right after I came on board, I had a PM to go in the uh, after escape patch and PM the um, uh, the escape trunk where the uh, life draft was at. And I pulled on the ladder to gain access to the uh, to the uh, uh, material behind it, and it pulled the lanyard, and the life raft inflated in the hatch, right on top of me. Very good. So I came out of the hatch real quick. Very good. And who did you bring with you today? Uh, this is my wife Donna and my son Jacob. All right, very good. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Very good. Bruce sighted, 72, 74. Bill Frilly was my sea daddy. Taught me everything he knows, and I still don't know anything. Uh, anyway, about my wife Karen. Very good. I don't good. have any wild stories like this now. <laughs> one? Can you think of one story? Made chief on San Lance. There you go. Got a hell of a good initiation in, where was that place? Baz Lane, Scotland. <laughs> Very good. All right, good. Congratulations. Thanks for coming today. Captain? Hi, Bob and Rosalind Bovey uh, with the ship from 73 through seven, early 77. There were so many adventures that it's hard to remember them all, but uh, one of the great ones was finally extracting the thing that had kept the sanitary gauge, sanitary discharge valve from closing during three months in the Mediterranean, Ooh. and it turned out to be a spoon from Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. <laughs> That's Very all. good. Very good. Thanks. Well, thanks for coming. Can you oh, and uh, this is oh. my wife, Rosalind. Rosalind, right. Very good. Thanks. I'm Brian Black, the uh, weapons officer on 92 to 97. I've got my wife, Casey, here with me. Most memorable moment was probably um, officer of the deck in the, um, in the Straits of Gibraltar at Periscope Deck. You'll never forget those days. What was memorable about it? The boat that you didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thanks. All right, thanks for coming. Hi, <laughs> uh, Mike Swanson, uh, ET2. Uh, was on from commissioning to 74. Most memorable moment, probably Liberty and and uh, Puerto Rico. Ooh, very good, very good. What was memorable about it? Uh, well, that you I, can say in public. Uh, <laughs> well, there was a place that was off limits, and that's where we were. <laughs> that's what I can say. Good enough. Good enough. Nate. Nate Eisenhower, commissioning crew. My most memorable experience was transporting Admiral Rickover from Logan Airport to the Sandlands for our first sea trial. Did he yell at you when you were in the car, when he was in the car? He just kept reading his newspapers. Oh, very good. Very good. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Bill Roeg, second class QM uh, from 85 to 89. Uh, most memorable moment is uh, in the Mediterranean while the Chiefs before the med, they painted their uh, hand dryer, and that's pretty blue. And I managed to paint it pink a couple days before it got underway. There you go. <laughs> Messing with the Chiefs, always good for careers. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Brian Lane, Corman, 84 to 87. Um, and I made Chief while I was on board. That for me was a memorable moment. Very good. And you brought? I brought my wife, Julie. Very good. All right. Thanks for coming, Brian. You bet. Ken Hutchinson, Chief of the Boat, 81 to 84. 
Ah, uh, my last submarine, I guess, is the best. <laughs> I would leave it. Very good. That was the most memorable? Yeah. Was, Very good. All right. 20 years punching holes in the ocean, I was ready to go. Excellent. Thanks for coming today. Uh, Wayne Carr, let's see, I was on San Lance from 73 to December of 78. And I guess I remember most. Well, one, I got, I was asked to stay over uh, for my second tour there to go through the overhaul. Uh, I, let's see, I was also honored to be asked to be the maneuvering watch OD for most of the second half of my tour. Very as good. A, uh, as a uh, young, fresh ensign on board, I had the honor of falling overboard during a maneuvering watch. <laughs> Uh, actually, I was going in to save an auxiliaryman who had fallen over before oh. me. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds good. That's the, that's the official story and you're sticking to it. Yes, I, I should have gotten a commendation. <laughs> <laughs> the guy lost in the noise. Very good. And today you brought with you? No, this is my wife, Nancy. Very good. Uh, Great. Thanks for coming today. All right. Uh, Mike Cavell. I was a CO from 77 to 81. And, uh, there are no single best memories. Being a CEO of a submarine is the best job in the world. And this is my wife, Joni. Very good. She has uh, something that she'd like to say about it. Very good. Well, I'll just tell you that my experience was joining the Sandlands going through the Panama Canal. Yeah. And it was the highlight of my life as a Navy wife to do wow. that. Go down to Cartagena and have that time with all the guys. I didn't see much of Mike there, but I saw a lot of the... Uh, Weapons officer. <laughs> I had a lot of dates during the daytime. Very good. Okay, that's <laughs> very <enough>. good. <laughs> All right, thank you for coming today. Uh, Glenn Labota, FTG1 SS. This is my wife Cheryl, who's been here today. And uh, I was on board from 76 to 81. Captain Covell was my was my captain. But uh, prior to his taking over, the funniest thing that I remember happening was on. So see some one of the sea trials with Captain Logan. We were running late, so he wanted to shoot TDU by dumping him over the side through the weapon shipping hatch. And while they were doing that, he or the OD turned the wrong way and took about 500 gallons of seawater down. Ooh. We were down eating lunch and lifting your feet up because the water was sloshing around in the galley. And Very good. That was quite memorable. Very for good. Somebody. All right. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ray Bryant. I was the Chief Quartermaster reporting aboard in 86. Uh, served in the 8 av billet from 86 to 90. Uh, my best memory is being able to influence some younger sailors and watch them grow and develop. Uh, one of those is uh, really gone real far. We'll be hearing from him today and tomorrow. Oh, excellent. But. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a genuine pleasure to watch the youngsters grow. Very good. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. <laughs> Bernie O'Neill, interior communications, electrician, third class. One of the most memorable experience serving on board the Sandlands was getting having the honor to serve with uh, Chief Jerry Pollard and Chief Walter Job. Two of the most wonderful people I've ever met in my life. Uh, both happen to be deceased at this time, and uh, we're just wonderful people. Very good. Thanks for thanks for coming today. I'm Jerry Brock, uh, Sonar Division uh, Commissioning Crew. This is my wife Carol. Hey. One of the sea stories I always tell is about Chief Job walking you through on qualifications at a magic flashlight. What's that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Thank you for coming today. You want to talk? Sure. I'm Bob O'Donnell. I met these guys uh, two years ago doing an informational seminar for them on asbestos-related lung cancer. Fell in love with the guys. I'm a bubblehead, but I qualified on 480 and 394. And uh, these are boats forever, but our Sokolov Outreach Program goes beyond me giving seminars. It goes to donations for the bench, etc. And we're proud to do it. Once a bubblehead, always bubblehead. Very good. Thank okay. you for Thank coming you today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Glad to be here. <laughs> Charlie? Charlie Shoup, St. Lance Commissioning crew. I was a radioman. I guess what I remember about the St. Lance the most was the first day I checked aboard, and the first person who spoke to me was 
uh, Senior Chief Pollard, Chief of the Boat, and he said, Son, we don't wear our sideburns that long on sand pits. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you for coming today. Uh, Bill Freely, quartermaster on the commissioning crew of the Sandlands for Charlie, talking about old times. Just the whole, the whole time in the in new construction. I think that was the best time I ever had. That was the first submarine. That that was about my third or fourth submarine. But that was the first submarine I really knew. Very good. Very good. Thanks for Thank coming you. today. All right. And I think that's everyone. Anybody hiding? Did I miss anyone? Last chance to get out of the... What about you? What about you? <laughs> I'm editing it. <laughs> okay, so... All right, very good. How much, how much are you going to see when you use it? Yeah. Don't run. This is uh, our Korean War veteran, Don Gillis. Uh, Don did us a special honor of taking care of one of our crew members, John Snakenberg passed away from a heart attack and his group. Don kind of led the, uh, the construction of a house for his family and uh, just wanted to make sure everybody got to know who Don Gillis was. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for coming today. Together to dedicate a memorial to shipmates. I don't think there's a Webster's definition that fits for the term shipmates. Uh, my, my wife came to a reunion with me in Portsmouth four years ago and what she got out of it not having a military background herself was you know I wish that the churches that you pastor and the people who claim to be Christians could treat one another the way that submarine crew treats one another. We cannot impress on the world at large the gravity of we go down together and we come up together or we don't. It's a memorable, memorable thing and we want to dedicate this bench this afternoon. This Remembrance Bench is hereby dedicated to the memory of the men who served their country in the United States Submarines, Sand Lance, SS-381, and SSN 660. May all who pause to rest here take note that they have the freedom to do so thanks to the men who sacrificed for that ability. To those who gave their all, we salute you for making the ultimate sacrifice. For those who served and somehow survived, we thank you. We dedicate this bench, give our deepest thanks to the people of the United States who made it possible. I want to have a short prayer now and we will play taps. Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving us a nation and a people and a men who made it possible for us to come gather freely together this afternoon to remember the gifts of freedom. For well, they are many and numerous and none of them are free. Father, we thank you so much for this gift of this country and these people. We give you praise. In the name of our Lord, Amen.
There will be a service of remembrance of those on eternal patrol in the hospitality room at the hotel this afternoon at 3 o'clock. We invite you all to attend.